poetry from the master. Thank you. <laughs> uh, by the way, Roger, unlike some noble people who spoke yesterday, I wrote those books for money, <laughs> among, <laughs> among other reasons. Did, did you, and uh, did you, did I have you? to say I was not successful in attaining ah. that goal. <laughs> uh, so I thought I was an atheist, and, and then this morning I went down to the cliffs and I saw the Pacific Ocean, and I fell to my knees. <laughs> Just kidding. But I, I did notice Darwin's face and the you know, foam on the waves. Uh, I, um, I've been very interested in what uh, people have had to say at this meeting, but I have to say that with a few uh, notable exceptions, the, the uh, viewpoints have run the gamut from A to B. And uh, I, uh, I mean, you know, should we bash religion with a crowbar or only with a baseball bat? <laughs> are, are, uh, are people of faith completely out to lunch or are they just having lunch at their desk and pouring sacramental wine into their keyboards? I mean, it's, this, this is about the, uh, uh, the extent of the debate. And uh, so I'm going to try and uh, add something to that. I would, would associate myself with what, uh, uh, with what Jim Woodward just said. <coughs> um, I am a uh, dyed-in-the-wool faith head, which, uh, using uh, Richard Dawkins' uh, uh, evocative phrase, dyed-in-the-wool faith head. But um, the wool in my head was, was thoroughly and completely bleached uh, in my first semester in college by a, uh, a, a wonderful course in um, Anglo-Saxon philosophic analysis. <clears throat> um, I got a D plus and the course changed my life. I have, I'm just past my 60th birthday and I have not had a flicker of faith uh, since then. However, and, um, one of the things I did along the way was go to medical school. I never practiced medicine, but I did have a lot of encounters with patients. And one of the things I was taught was it, it is not the job of the physician to take away the patient's hope. So in the con context was, yes, you tell the truth. So I, I'm sorry, sir, but, but you have terminal cancer and uh, you might die next year or the year after. I'm not sure. But no, doc, I think I'm going to be OK. It's going to be fine. Uh, and, and when you have that exchange three times, you stop because it's not the job of the physician to take away the patient's hope. Uh, truth is fine, but you don't have to batter somebody with it. And, and I was happy to hear that, that Richard Dawkins agreed with me. He said he would not tell somebody uh, his views if they were on their deathbed. I find that quite inconsistent, actually. Uh, as many people have pointed out uh, during the meeting, um, we're all on our deathbeds as soon as we attain consciousness of, of the fact that we're going to end up in the same place. Um, and, uh, and I would suggest to you that, that all of you, uh, all of us who, who speak to the public <coughs> about, about science, uh, are physicians in a way, and that it's not the job of the physician to take away the patient's hope. OK, so <coughs> um, with that as an introduction, uh, this is uh, the, the foundational moment in the religion of my childhood. Uh, the, the, ten, you know, five, last five of the Ten Commandments. Mo uh, the expression this is a Rembrandt. The, the expression on Moses' face is, uh, means um, this is going to be the marketing problem from hell. And the, uh, the, the Tenth Commandment, which is very long, uh, is long because it's the one that, that tries to tell you to control your thoughts. And somebody was nervous when they, uh, God was a little nervous when he, when he wrote that one, so he, he made it longer. Uh, that's the one about coveting. <clears throat> um, so here's another depiction. Uh, I chose rays coming out of Moses' head. I, I chose this to, uh, uh, to, to remind me to tell you that, that uh, uh, being a member of this group and entails a certain amount of suffering. Uh, I, the, the Hebrew word for rays of light uh, is, is the same as the, the word for horns. Michelangelo uh, depicted Moses with horns. Uh, some very large uh, boys, non-Jewish boys in my neighborhood in Brooklyn <coughs> uh, went looking for my horns from time to time. Uh, and I, I, you know, I understand that religion can do bad things, <coughs> really. Uh, and I, uh, I, uh, as for the Holocaust, I, I grew up uh, I learned to talk during the Nuremberg trials. I was told my 
parents postponed my conception until the closing of the gas chambers. <coughs> uh, I, I grew up with Holocaust survivors around me, uh, even though it was in the United States. And uh, so I'm not going to take a back seat to anybody on Holocaust paranoia. I, I'm going to have a front row seat at the Holocaust paranoia event. <coughs> uh, and I do resent, to a certain extent, the use of, uh, of Holocaust history to advance a simplistic attack on, on religion. So this is a, a <coughs> from a 17th century uh, Haggadah showing the drowning of Pharaoh's army in the sea, uh, a Christian depiction of the same thing uh, by Lucas Cronick the Elder, 16th century, and a Muslim depiction of the same thing uh, <coughs> of 18th century uh, Iran. Uh, <coughs> of 18th century uh, Iran, um, funnily enough. And uh, of course, if, uh, if half the people in the world uh, believe this, you, you think, well, let's go looking for chariot wheels on the bottom of the Red Sea. And archaeologists have indeed done that, including some very religious ones who very much wanted to find them. And they, uh, ha their search has, uh, has so far been fruitless. Uh, now you can't prove. Uh, uh, um, that that uh, that it didn't happen, absent uh, <coughs> uh, evidence is not evidence of absence. But uh, we're pretty. I'm on pretty firm ground when I say that that didn't happen, uh, and uh, and that's an empirical uh, uh, question. Now, when <coughs> I went to the uh, um, uh, to the live with the Bushmen of Botswana, where I was doing research on uh, the hormonal mediation of lactational infertility, among other subjects, uh, I became an apprentice trance dancer. Um, and this was after my conversion to, to uh, uh, British philosophy, and I have to say that it didn't uh, entail a change in faith, just a change in behavior. The trans dance, women sit around the fire. This is the morning after an all-night dance. Uh, women sit around the fire, they, they clap and, or, uh, uh, and sing uh, in sort of yodeling, uh, eerie voices. And men dance around the circle until they go into altered states of consciousness, and then they can heal by laying on hands and going through a particular ritual. I, I put this up to show you. This, this is a hunting and This was a hunting and gathering society at that time. It, it's a very fundamental expression of of, of human r religious uh, um, <clears throat> faith, and uh, they they uh, were polytheists. They believed in their ancestors were alive. They when they went into trance, they said that they uh, uh, had gone. Afterwards, they said they had gone to see their ancestors in, uh, in the uh, <coughs> the uh, ancestral village, as they call it. And um, I, I just want you to know that I fully respect this uh, this belief system, uh, although I, as much as I, I do uh, uh, the others that I've mentioned, and, and um, uh, I think that uh, that there's it's it's. Uh, it shows you how, uh, looking at a system like this shows you how religion uh, fills uh, very basic human needs. And this is what uh, I saw last year when I went back to visit there. Uh, it's very similar uh, uh, trance dance, except that at this point uh, women were the only uh, trance dancers. So that, that's one of the, uh, it's parallel to the change that Richard talked about yesterday in the, in the role of women in, in certain ways in, in uh, our society, but of course it's not like uh, <coughs> the elimination of, of religion. Okay, so <coughs> before I took this uh, philosophy course, I thought <coughs> there were three answers to the question, do you believe in God? Uh, one, <coughs> I believe God exists. Uh, two, I believe God does not exist. Three, I don't know if God exists. But there aren't three, there are four. Uh, I don't understand you, <coughs> is the, the answer that my philosophy professor gave. And that is the first answer that, that I give. Um, if you say, if you then say, when I say, don't, I don't understand you, if you then say, well, um, I mean a guy in the sky who spoke to Moses and, and dictated the Ten Commandments, then I know what to say. Then I say two. Uh, <coughs> that does not exist and did not exist. Uh, it, it, but if you say something like God is love or God is life, or God is the spirit in all things, or you say something vague, uh, uh, vague uh, around that, uh, then I say I don't understand you. So you can think of me as Schrodinger's cat, sort of smeared between two and four, uh, and, uh, and that's where I stand now. 